All right, in this video, we are going to talk about another kind of derivative for multivariable functions. This derivative is called a directional derivative. So we're going to talk about what that means. And so you can see I have here typed some things that we have already looked at. So the first thing is the definition from Calc 1 of the derivative of a function f with respect to x. And uh, so you remember what that represents. You've got some function graph. You've got a point at x equals c, and then you have another point at x equals c plus h, and this expression here represents the slope between those two points, and then you take the limit as h approaches zero from both sides, and then you generalize that for all values of x for which that limit exists. And what you get is this expression that describes a rate of change or a slope of a tangent line uh, for the function at a given point c, and then you can look at that for lots of different points. So that's the idea here. All right, and then next I have the partial derivatives that we looked at earlier in this chapter. So this first one describes how f changes when we go in the direction of increasing x. And this second one, partial derivative of f with respect to y, describes how f changes when we go in the direction of increasing y. So just to draw a little picture out here to the side to make sure we understand what we're thinking about when we think about these partial derivatives. So in x, y, z coordinate system, we have some surface given by z equals f of x, y. And when we're thinking about these partial derivatives at a point, we've got some point x, y, and then we've got a point on the surface that corresponds to what that x, y point is, so the f of x, y. And when we look at the partial derivative with respect to x, we're holding y constant and letting x change. So we looked at some graphs on Calcplot 3D where it had just drawn a curve with a slice through the surface where y was held constant and x is allowed to change. And then we looked at the slope of the tangent line to the surface at that point in the x direction. So that would represent the partial derivative of f with respect to x. And then you can also do partial derivative with respect to y. So if you slice that surface along a fixed value for x, let x remain constant and let y change. So you're looking at a slice in the y direction and looking at the slope of that tangent line to that curve in the y direction. But we kind of talked about this when we first looked at partial derivatives that uh, you might be at that particular point and want to go in some other direction, some direction that is not just along the x direction or the y direction, but maybe you're at that point and you want to go in a direction that is maybe kind of between the x and y and you're interested in rates of change in that direction. And so that's what we're really interested in here, the idea of directional derivatives. All right, so I'm going to scroll up here and I'm going to write down the definitions and we want to kind of think about how we might write that definition and just kind of extend the idea of what what we've got for partial derivatives here. So I'm going to fill in some things above this, but the idea is that we've got our function f and I want to allow both the x and the y to change. So I would maybe like to add something to both the x and the y. So in our partial derivative definitions, I only added h to the x or the y, not both. But here, if I want to let both x and y change, I want to be able to add something to both the x and the y, but maybe not in the same amount. If I want to go more in the x direction than the y direction, I might not want to go in the same amount. So we need something to kind of control the direction in which we go and also the proportion with which we increase the x and the y's. And so we're going to use something that we can use in three dimensions or more dimensions to indicate a direction here. And so we'll have a vector, we'll use a unit vector, which gives the direction we want to go in. And we will use the components of that unit vector to multiply times the h values here to control how much we increment the x by and how much we increment the y by. So if u1 is bigger than u2, we're going to be incrementing the x's more than the y's and vice versa. All right, so that's the same idea that we had in the partial derivatives where we were incrementing the x or the y from our base point. Here we're incrementing both the x and the y from our base point. And we're using that unit vector to control the proportion with which we increase each of those. So we've got our function incremented away from our base point, and then we want to subtract 
our function at our base point. And then we want to divide by h and take the limit as h approaches 0. So this is what we're going to use to define our directional derivative. I'll go ahead and write those words here. So the directional derivative of a function f of x, y is what I have done here in the direction of our vector u is given by this expression here. And this is a derivative with respect to distance. I did not use the curly del symbol there. I used an ordinary d. Uh, the units on this would be rate of change of f with respect to distance df ds. And that s is the same s that we've seen before. That is an arc length parameter. Remember the arc length parameter is what allows you to describe distance using the same scale in your x and y direction, but in other directions. We used that when we looked at distances along curves. Here we're going to be looking at distances basically along curves that are cross section through the surface. Um, okay, so uh, a couple of other things about this. Uh, there's some other notation that we sometimes use to denote a directional derivative. Uh, our textbook likes to use this notation that I'm going to write down here. So sometimes we denote that d with a subscript of u, u indicating the direction of f. So that would be the derivative in the direction of u of f, or the derivative of f in the direction of u. Our textbook likes to use this notation. Uh, and then the other thing I want to talk about is what if we had more variables? What if we had x, y, z, function of x, y, z, instead of just function of two variables? So if I had more variables, then I'm just going to have more components here. So I'm just going to squeeze a z in here. Then I would need a unit vector in R3. So I'd have a u1, u2, u3. And then my definition would be exactly the same as I have here. I would just have a z here inside the function. So z plus u3 times h inside there and then minus f of x, y, z. So this definition can be extended to however many variables you have. All right, in the next video, we're going to look at a formula for calculating the directional derivative. This formula helps you understand what the directional derivative represents, but it's not always the best formula for actually calculating that. So make sure you look at that next video for a helpful formula for how to calculate it.